Good afternoon, Paulie. How are you? I am well. How are you? I'm just uh, hoping and praying I don't have blueberries in between my teeth. It's all part of the charm. It isn't it just, yeah. <laughs> Nothing more charming than seeds in your teeth. Do you want to give us a close-up and I can let you know? <laughs> Delightful. <laughs> so, um, so we were fortunate enough to be interviewed the other day and um, a topic that came up in the interview was about morning routine, evening routine, and essentially what's in between that is sleep. And um, sleep, oh, I love you. Oh, don't we all <laughs> especially as dads yes exactly and and then really like because we love sleep so much we want to pay attention to it <clears throat> and um and basically since the turn of the year i started to recognize that you know my morning is either i'm up early for work or i'm up early to be with the kids and so either way i'm just up early so where am i going to get the extra sleep that I'm looking for and craving. And so I kind of just reverse engineered the situation and recognize that it's got to start the night before. It's not so much about what the morning routine looks like. It's what I'm doing the night before that will impact how the morning flows. And so I looked at like what happens like when, you know, the computer shuts down and it's family time, dinner time, bath time, putting the kids to bed time. Like what happens there and what happens after that? And where can I make that extra little bit of time to just slow down, to give myself a chance to just switch off, relax, enter bed at an earlier time to be able to go to sleep earlier and wake up feeling refreshed and rejuvenated because I've gotten the sleep that I'm craving. And so in doing so, I've started to say that actually I can get in bed by about 9 p.m. And I'm just like loving the attempt of doing that on a daily basis. It's not always possible, but ultimately for me, it's like nine at nine o'clock in bed, 9.30 asleep. And between 9 and 9.30, you know, I'm in there with my wife, we're having a lovely chat or I'm reading a book or I'm writing some notes about how the day was and planning what's going to happen the next day. And then it's like 9.30, lights off and it's just sleep time. And all of a sudden, it's like then if I'm getting up at 5, 5.30, 6 o'clock, I just feel like I'm well rested. Whereas before, you know, I'd just space out the night so long that I wouldn't be in bed till 10, 10.30, then asleep by 11. And it was like, of course, I'm going to wake up exhausted because it's just not enough sleep for me. So I saw the importance of looking at what I'm doing at night and how can I just make up that extra time? And it was just all about prioritising just shutting down a little bit earlier and just being really proactive with like what I, what I do in my evening hours. And that is just such a powerful practice and thing to reflect on. And so many people, thank you for, for giving us that succinct kind of shift that you've made with your, with your evening um, routine. And it is a routine because what you've done is you've made a conscious effort to be able to um, give yourself one of the most important things that uh, someone could possibly have. And that's a restful night's sleep. So you can repair your brain and your body hormonally uh, for the day ahead. And th there really is nothing more important than that. And scientific studies are, are showing it over and over and over again. And so many people will say, but what about my time to unwind? The kids go to sleep. Where's the opportunity for me to sit down and, and and what net, watch Netflix, maybe have a glass of wine or a beer or whatever it might be, my time. And, you know, it, it, I think it all really does depend on uh, where, you're, where you're at in life, A, eh? and what your priorities are during that, I like to call season of life. And if you're a, a father with young children, Generally speaking, you're in a season of life where uh, time is going to be uh, a challenge. And that is even more of a reason for you to prioritize sleep over, um, you know, late, late nights out um, socializing. And that's not to say you can't socialize. It just needs to be a balance. And the balance needs to shift a little bit more towards in my world needs to shift a little bit more towards prioritizing sleep rather than going out every night. 
And, you know, I went out for dinner last night, but it was, you know, I met, met, I met a friend uh, out for dinner at eight o'clock. I was still in bed by 1030, you know, it was, you're still able to do these things. And I, I mean, I prioritize sleep so much that I think I, I, I was telling you a couple of days ago, I prior, I went out and bought this. I'm still waiting on it to be delivered. It's I'm looking forward to it. pants silk mask that I, I'm going to feel like a Raj um, sleeping on a nightly basis. But like, that's, that's going to be a, a hell of a review for the, the people back at home. That's for sure. But ultimately, um, rest and sleep is going to affect everything that you do the following day and that's what we need to understand and know and it's going to give everything that you do that next day an extra 10 15 20 percent because you just know that it's giving you a, this is what i tell my daughter when i put her to sleep she's like why do i have to go to sleep i said because it gives you your superpowers sleep gives you superpowers and, and I truly believe that I'm not even like telling her that to, you know, you know, to blow smoke. It's just, uh, I believe sleep is your superpowers. Well, I guess, you know, growing up, we're all resisting going to bed. And as soon as we hit a certain age, I'm not sure what it is, but there's like all, all I can think about is sleep now. It's just like, how do I get to sleep? <laughs> like, how do I prioritize more sleep and more sleep? And it's great that science backs up how important it is. And I, I just feel every day it's so important to get that sleep. And eye masks, earplugs, people do mouth guards. I mean, whatever makes you comfortable, temperature, you know, do you do a cold shower, you know, three hours before? What's your eating routine before you go to sleep? I mean, there's so many things to look at to know what your quality sleep is like. There's obviously the aura ring, the whoop strap, people wearing garden watches, Apple watches, Whatever it takes to get a good sleep, we might do none of that and still sleep well. And I'm envious and uh, just keep doing what you're doing. But if you're looking for some tactics to upgrade what you're doing, look at your food, look at your alcohol, uh, look at your screen time. Um, you know, there's so many things to look at. And uh, I'd love to chat with you all things um, sleep related. So feel free to reach out at any time. Paul, any, so anything that you're doing or any tips that you'd like to offer? Well, First, I will say is that we've refined our, our, our sleeping individually, both you and I, we've refined our sleeping routine down to a fine art. And we'd love to be able to share exactly what's helped us and uh, dads that we've been able to guide uh, for the last number of years uh, to be able to transform their lives. Um, one, one thing I will say is having uh, not being too warm in bed is, is definitely a big one for me. I'm a, I'm a sweater. Uh, and having a, um, like a reasonable uh, temperature outside, it, people tend to create warmth synonymous with rest, but um, that doesn't tend to be uh, what science backs up to being the most uh, restful night's sleep, which is tend to overheat and our body works too hard. Um, yeah, I love my masks. I love my earplugs. I just want to, I, I basically look like Hannibal Lecter when I'm, <laughs> and, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> my wife, not so much, but. <laughs> it might be nice to have a takeaway. And I don't know if you want to participate in this, but we could take photos of, <laughs> <laughs> what what goes on in a bedroom? <laughs> well, I'll, I will share with you, you it out. What, what goes on with, in a bedroom, Dan. Dan. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do interpretation, but we're talking <laughs> sleep, so let's keep it focused there. Um, what I will share with you is a post that I did a while back, which I have done a little bit of, but not a tremendous amount of you, but you may have inspired me to do it uh, again, which is that yes. uh, which, is, which is taping my mask uh taping my mask taping my mouth up to allow for uh, uh exclusive nasal breathing yeah which um a lot of science once again is really really backed up so that's something that i might uh, uh bring back on board and i encourage you to to jump on board with me if you want Dan. I'm striving to do it. I'm striving to sleep on my side. I mean, I'm always looking at ways that I can just feel better in bed. And um, mm. yeah, I think if you're struggling at any point, you know, look
look for solutions and of course reach out because we love sleep. Happy to talk about it all day. Not because <laughs> we'll be asleep. Um, thanks everyone. I look forward to hearing from you. And thanks everybody. <laughs>